Hello everyone, it's Karen. Welcome to another video. Now today we're going to do an album review, something I haven't done for a while, but I felt like doing another album review, um, and I've been meaning to, do, to kind of do these again for quite a while. Um, something I want to do again is like go over albums and stuff like that, and talk about them, and even you know, even see if they're good or bad, things like that. Today I'm going to be reviewing one of my all-time favorite albums, and this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, and um, it's one of my all-time favorite albums. It's Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and Damn the Torpedoes. Now this is an album that I'm going to be reviewing today. I'm going to go over the, the background behind the album, show you my copies of the album, go over each track, talk about them, and give the and we'll rev and talk about the album as a whole. Um, so yeah, this was Tom Petty's third album, released on October the nineteenth, nineteen seventy-nine, on Backstreet MCA Records. Prior to this album, Tom had made his first two albums, and the first one had initially um, not really gotten anywhere aside from like a couple, some cities, and um, it eventually started to get a lot more attention um, after Tom and the Heartbreakers did a lot of touring for their first album. And then their second album came out in May of 1978, which was called You're Gonna Get It, and that also did quite well, and that is almost established Tom's ability as a songwriter, as uh, Stance as a songwriter, sorry. Um, but prior to recording the album, they'd been with a producer called Denny Cordell, and it became apparent that the band and Denny Cordell had con had kind of done all they could do together, um, because Denny was kind of busy with his other c things in his company and didn't really have enough time to work close with Tom and the band anymore. So Tom and the band were kind of looking for new for somebody else to produce the album, and they found Jimmy Iovine. Now, Jimmy was a successful recording engineer. Jimmy had recorded with Bruce Springsteen on the album Born to Run and Darkness in the Edge of Town. He also recorded Patti Smith. And he even, uh, one of his early engineering roles was for John Lennon and his solo album uh, Rock and Roll in 1974-75. So Jimmy was a very successful um, engineer by this point, but he hadn't yet done a producing. So Tom and Jimmy got on very well, and Jimmy was actually really impressed with Tom's um, songwriting. When Tom played him some of the songs he'd written, Jimmy was very impressed, and he actually said to Tom, and and that was the first and last time he said to me, you don't need any more songs, you're, you're, you're good. <laughs> so, But also, around about this t time, uh, but we'll talk about that later on, um, Jimmy was driven to get the band's best sound, So and that caused a bit of friction during the making of the album, particularly with drummer Stan Lynch, and even Mike Campbell, Found it pretty stressful as well on many occasions. There's, there's also documentaries where they talk about that. But also, around about this time, in 1979, Tom Petty's record label, who he was with, Shelter Records, had been sold to MCA Records, who was a big corporation at the time. And Tom had felt that there had been this like agreement that he'd had with ABC, who were the distributor for Shelter, that if their contract was to be sold to anybody else, they would have to tell ask Tom for consent. That way he could reach or leave an agreement if he was to sell the contract on. And ABC said okay to that. Then the next thing that happened was that Shelter ABC was sold to MCA Records. And Tom was furious because he felt that there was that this had not been read, the consent agreement had not been read. He told, tried to get out of MCA, but they refused to release him, and they, in response, sued. And Tom had been receiving a very low royalty rate since he signed Shelter in the very early days of his career, back in uh, the Mud Crouch days in 1974. Tom had been receiving very low royalties, and the management looked into Tom's agreement and realised that there was no way Tom was going to be able to pay the company what he owed because of his deal. So Tom basically figured out that he could declare himself bankrupt to get himself out of the contract with um, with MCA. Eventually a compromise and agreement was reached between Tom and MCA and he received a better contract with a label called Backstreet Records which was like a, a smaller branch at MCA Records. And Down the Torpedoes eventually came out in October of 1979 after much legal trouble. The album was released in October of 1979. It peaked at number two in the Billboard, and it was number 57 in the UK. Now, seriously, people, what were you guys buying back in 1979? I don't know. Why this got to 57, I'll never know. It should have got a lot higher, because it's a great album. Uh, Rolling Stones put this in the list of their 500 great albums in 2003. It also went double and triple and platinum, and this was the first record where Tom and the Heartbreakers had really made it big, where finally people were paying attention and people began to notice Tom Petty and his songwriting and his music. So I'm going to show you my copies here. This is the vinyl version. This is a nice copy. Uh, this is an original from 1979. That's the back. Songs down there. 
and the band members there's Tom Ben Tom Petty, Ben Montench, Mike Campbell, Stan Lynch and Ron Blair. So I'm gonna take the vinyl out. This is a really nice copy. Here's the original in a sleeve. There's a really funny picture on the back there. And like I say, this is on Backstreet Records with MCA distribution. It's got a nice label design with the rainbow design. And I've also got another copy of Damn Torpedoes. This was my dad's old copy. I got this back in 2017. And as you can see, this is a bit beat up. Uh, this is actually my plain copy of Damn the Torpedoes. This is the one I, I play. Because I don't, uh, I, I, cause I want to keep this one quite nice. This is the one I play. But it actually plays okay. Uh, it actually sounds, plays through all the way fine. No skips or jumps. Plays fine. Um, uh, same label, MCA Backstreets. Uh, label design and I also have the CD of Damn the Torpedoes this is the 2010 I think it's a remaster I'm not sure could be wrong but uh, it's a 2010 release from Universal there's the disc picture on the inside of Tom from the inner sleeve booklet you don't really get much you just uh, get the song lyrics, which you don't get with the original vinyl. Um, I don't think the original vinyl ever came with lyrics, but you get the lyrics in here, which is nice. But but nice to see some more pictures from the time and um, maybe like liner notes from like Tom or somebody like that about the making of the album. That would be nice to see, but hey oh. Anyways, there's this, all my copies gone over. Now we're gonna go over all the album's tracks. So we begin the album with Refugee. This is my favourite Tom Petty song of all time. I love the jump start, the do do do, and I like the way it just starts off uh, the album. Um, it's a great way to start off an album, I think. Um, and it's got great lyrics. I really like Tom's vocal performances and even the backing vocals from Ben Mont Tension and Stan Lynch as well. It's great as well. This was one that they had tried to get right on a number of occasions, but for whatever reason they couldn't get the track right. They recorded several versions of this track in the studio um, and they were not really getting it getting it right. There's like loads of, like, even they, one of the members, I think it was Ron, said there was like loads of takes of Refugee because they just couldn't get the track right. But eventually they... I think they went to uh, New York. They recorded this at Sound City, but they eventually got the mix right. And it's a great track. This was, the I think, one of the many singles off the album and one of Tom Petty's biggest um, biggest hits as well. Um, but unfortunately, the singles didn't really peak anywhere in the UK, which is a great shame because there's a, there really are a lot of great songs on here. But yeah, this one's been my favourite Tom Petty song, especially the live version on the uh, Pack Up the Plantation live album in 1985, um, which you can check out on um, on YouTube. Second track up is Here Comes My Girl, one of my favourite songs, and this is another great one, I get like the do 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 the drum, and even like Tom, hearing Tom didn't speaking, and then he starts, does singing, and speaking and singing, things like that, um, but this is a great song, and this was even a single as well, which I have the 12 inch of, um, this is the 12 inch single for Here Comes My Girl, uh, with Casadega, which is one of the ones they recorded for Down the Torpedoes, but it never made the album, and Don't Bring Me Down, uh, I'll talk about the, them songs as well, the, um, the end of the video as well. Uh, Don't Bring Me Down is a cover version uh, recorded live in Boston in 1978. So that's a 12 inch of Here Comes My Girl. But yeah, uh, this is one of my favourites. And there's even a version on American Treasure where it doesn't fade out. On the studio regular release version, it does fade out. But on American Treasure set in 2018, it does not fade out at all. It goes, it continues, and then it has a normal kind of ending. That was quite interesting that they uh, included that version on um, American Treasure, which was released in 2018. Yeah, great song, Here Comes My Girl. Um, one of my favourite songs from Tom. Another big hit as well. Then we have one of my favourites, and one that I don't think was ever a single, but Even The Losers. Even The Losers is one of my favourite Tom Petty songs again. I like the lyrics um, and the chorus, Green's quite charming, Even The Losers, Get Lucky Sometimes, which is quite a true scene as well, because you know Tom Petty seemed to be philosophical in his songs, and he has quite a true scene um, in his lyrics, which is what I love about this one, Even The Losers, Get Lucky Sometimes. Um, this was one that Mike Campbell had written, um, he, but he was trying to figure out a riff in the middle or something in the middle, and he was kind of thinking of what would Chuck Berry, what kind of riff would Chuck Berry play, and he tried to play like a Chuck Berry style um, solo in the middle, 
Um, in fact, um, Mike Campbell co-wrote the first two songs with Tom Petty. Um, he kind of did them as kind of demos, and Tom kind of added the lyrics to them. Um, so yeah, th these are like this is a great song as well. Then we have Shadow of a Doubt, a complex kid. This is uh, a good, great song. Um, this is quite a nice, upbeat, rocky kind of song, and um, and this is uh, the chorus. And she's always so hard to figure out. is is great as well. It kind of has you. You'll kind of catch it in your head, the chorus. It's quite a catchy chorus in many ways. Um, yeah, really great song. I um, don't know what much to say about uh, this one. Uh, but it's one that doesn't really get acknowledged as often. And it was one that Tom Petty certainly, on occasions, would play live over the years. But um, you can... Um, but um, yeah, but there's a lot of great songs on here. A lot of gr great songs, as I say. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, the final track in side one is Century City. Now, Century City was written because uh, this was where the lawyers lived in Century City during their MCA lawsuit. They had to go to Century City uh, pretty much every day because that's where the lawyers were based, uh, was Century City. Uh, something I didn't realise until like years years later. You would never have thought at the time that that was where, they, that that's how they wrote it, was because of that. Um, but, um, yeah, it's a great song. It's a really great rocky, upbeat song and it's really great as well um, great rocker I like a lot of songs in here Century City turn over to side 2 with Don't Do Me Like That um, this is a great song this was a song that Tom had had during his mud crutch days but he revived it for this album and he was going to give it to the Jay Giles band originally but um, I'm not too sure what the what happened but he ended up not giving it and recording it for himself which is a great move um, I really like the kind of the lyrics um don't do me like that. Well, if I love you, baby, don't do me like that. Um, that was a, a saying from Tom's dad. Tom always said in an interview that that was something his dad used to say. Don't do me like that, son. <laughs> so Tom kind of took that and that was why he called it. was because that was something his dad always used to say. Um, next up, we have You Tell Me. This one um, is a good song. Um, it's kind of... Um, it's a good song. It's quite a, not as upbeat, quite slow, but it's still a good, um, good song. Um... And uh, it's um, one that doesn't really get looked at as often. And it was one that they, as far as that we know, never played live, um, which is unusual. But it's a it's a good song. Um, it's a one that I like a lot. It's one that I quite like. And it never it was all right at first, but then it, it, I eventually got to like the track a bit more after hearing it a few more times. There's there's some Tom Petty songs that when you hear them for the first time, sometimes you think, oh yeah, some are good. But then you, you give them a few more lessons, and they'll eventually. The will That's what has happened to me on many occasions with songs. First of all, I think, oh yeah, it's good, but then I listen to it again, and I'm like, oh, I actually really like this um, this song. Um, then we have What Are You Doing In My Life. This is another pretty good song. Um, this is a really good song, and um, kind of like uh, Tom basically singing about some kind of groupie or some unwanted um, stalker or something trying to follow him. Basically, I don't know how you get the telephone number, some jerk trying to put me under, what you did in my life and didn't ask for you, those kind of lyrics. Um, but yeah, uh, another good song, one that I really like a lot. Um, then we get the final track, on, and even on, before I get to the final track, you even hear Tom saying the engineer's name, who was Shelly Yakis. You can hear go, Shelly, Shelly, Shelly Yakis. It kind, of, it kind of sounds like that. And again, on American Treasure, there's a version where he... It, you can hit, it ends, has a normal ending, it doesn't fade out. Um, this one has a normal kind of ending. Um, like, again, same way, Here Comes My Girl, this has a normal ending, um, not a fade out, so on the American Treasure version. So pretty cool that that's also included on American Treasure. Last track is Louisiana Rain, and this is a great way to close the album. It's a nice, real soft song. I love the harmonica solo in the middle. And then again, this is a song from Mud Crouch, which Tom revived for the, the project. Um, I love Tom's vocals in the song. Uh, it's a nice kind of soft, slow song to round off the album uh, as a whole, you know. And he even mentions places like um, San Diego, South Carolina, uh, those places. Uh, Baton Rouge as well, which is in Louisiana. Um, so yeah, one of my uh, favourite Tom Petty songs, Louisiana Rain. And that ends the album. And um, so Down the Torpedoes for me is a solid 10 out of 10. This was the record that really... Um, changed Tom Petty in the Heartbreakers' life. Even Tom always said that was the record where we, the the where we knew it was going to be never going to be the same. That was the record we knew we were going to make it big, um, something like that. Um, 
but yeah, they, it's a great album, and it's one of my favourites, um, and it's even, it's definitely up there with a favourite albums like Wildflowers, or Hard Promises, or even uh, Southern Accents is another one I really like, um, but there's also Tom Petty albums I would consider being great, um, things like, you know, Wildflowers, this, Long After Dark, Southern Accents, there's just loads of great albums I can name off the top of my head, even Echo's another great album as well, although that's quite a dark album, Echo's, um, a great album as uh, as well. So um, yeah, and also uh, before I wrap up the video, I've also got a DVD. It's this classic albums, Damn the Torpedoes. This is a series of um, programs where they talk about classic albums, the making of them, and they even like review the mixes of some of these songs as well uh, by basically going to the multi track masters and kind of playing isolated like a vocal track or a guitar. Um, things like that, um, or even a shaker or a drum, bass, piano. They, they played the, the whole thing and it's really, really a cool watch. You get to see Tom and the Heartbreakers and even Jimmy Iovine and Shelly Akers talking on here. So it's really great watch. If you can find this this DVD, if you're a Tom Petty fan and you don't have this, this is one I definitely recommend um, that you watch. So there we are. That's it for this video. Uh, so Diamond Torpedoes is a 10 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, and if you want to see more album reviews, vinyl updates, or if you want to see more videos in general, just subscribe, turn the bell on, and you'll be get notified when a new video comes out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.